Hello friends, this is Supriya. Welcome back to my channel Biology Reader. Today in this video session, we will discuss the membrane filtration technique for the water analysis. So friends, let's get started. Starting with the introduction, membrane filtration method is used to check the water quality, whether it contains coliforms or not. Presence of coliforms in the water system indicates that there could be disease causing organisms in the water. This method is also called millipore filter technique because it uses membrane filter of minute pore size to trap the microorganisms. Membrane filtration is also used as an alternative to NPN or most probable number method as it gives rapid results. This method has two basic approaches. One is it helps in isolation and enumeration of microbes in the desired volume of water sample by using colony counter. Secondly, using this method, we can determine the water quality by calculating the colony forming units over the culture plate. Therefore, membrane filtration method inspects both the water quality and quantity of microorganisms in the water. Now we will study the different components of the membrane filtration assembly. Filter funnel is fixed at the top from where the water sample is passed. Locking ring is present below the filter funnel. It is also called clamp and it controls the flow of water sample. Membrane filter is placed over the carbon disc using sterile forcep. Stainless base holds both the carbon disc and the membrane filter. Then at the base, rubber stopper controls the water flow into the filter flask. Filter flask collects the filtrate and it has a connector at one end. Vacuum pump is connected to the filter assembly through the connector. It provides a negative pressure permitting the suction of filtrate. Now let us take a quick overview on the membrane filter. Membrane filters are the biological filters that are composed of cellulose esters. These have an uniform pore size ranging between 0.22 to 0.4 μm and a thickness of 150 μm. Membrane filter can trap the microorganisms present in the 100 ml of water sample. Therefore, membrane filter acts as a barrier that separates contaminants from the water. Membrane filtration traps contaminants that are larger than the pore size on the surface of the membrane. Thus, bacteria and other particulate matter retain on the surface of the membrane filter. Membrane filters are extensively used in laboratories for the isolation and separation methods. In industries like cosmetics, food and beverages, these are used to check the presence of bacteria and to sterilize the heat labile fluids. Also, the membrane filters are used in water engineering for the qualitative analysis of water by the direct microbial count method. Friends, after the separation of bacteria over the membrane filter, we need to prepare a special plate for which we need an absorbent paper. Absorbent paper is the filter paper disc having a diameter of 48 mm and a thickness of 0.8 mm. The absorbent paper can absorb 1.8 to 2.2 ml of the nutrient medium. To prepare the special plate, first we need to saturate the absorbent paper with an appropriate liquid or solid nutrient medium. Then we have to place the membrane filter containing viable bacterial cells over the saturated absorbent medium. Then at last we need to incubate the plate. The passage of nutrients through the filter during incubation allows the growth of bacterial colonies on the upper surface of the membrane filter. Now we will discuss the procedure of the membrane filtration method. Before starting the procedure, we need to autoclave the parts of the filtration assembly. Then we need to assemble the filtration unit inside the laminar airflow. So for the water analysis, we need to collect the water sample from different sources like groundwater and sewage water. Then we have to transfer a predetermined volume of the water sample through the filtration assembly. The contaminants like fecal and total coliforms retain on the membrane filter. Fecal coliforms like Escherichia species, Enterobacter species, etc. in the water indicates fecal contamination. Some fecal coliforms are also pathogenic. Whereas total coliforms belong to the Enterobacteriaceae family, they are gram negative rods and non spore formers. Therefore, the detection of fecal and total coliforms is necessary to check the water quality. For fecal coliforms, the absorbent paper is saturated with the MFC agar media. Whereas to isolate total coliforms, the absorbent paper is saturated with the M endo agar media and these two media are both selective and differential. Then the membrane filter containing bacteria is placed over the absorbent paper that is saturated with the specific media. Then the plates are incubated for 24 hours. 
The presence of fecal coliforms is characterized by lactose fermentation with the production of acid and gas at an incubation temperature of 44.5 degrees Celsius. Formation of dark blue colonies indicate the presence of fecal coliforms, whereas the presence of total coliforms is characterized by the lactose fermentation with the production of acid at an incubation temperature of 35 degrees Celsius. The formation of red colonies indicate the presence of total coliforms. Then we can count the number of fecal and total coliforms by the direct microscopic count method. So friends, this is all for today. To know this topic more in detail, you can visit our official website that is biologyreader.com. Link is provided in the description box. So friends, if you find this lesson useful, do like, comment, share and subscribe my channel. And don't forget to press the bell icon for more videos.